Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Amen. It's good to be back in the Lord's house. Yes. Looking forward to what the Lord's going to do here this morning. Amen. I want to start off, and I know Buddy will probably speak of this when he's giving announcements as well, but I, I just want to personally thank everyone that come out and supported the youth Friday night. Uh, and, and I want to especially thank the youth. I'm telling you, we had a great time. It was, a, it was just everything about it was just wonderful. And, and I thank God for it. And I think I, I had told Chris, you know, sometimes it seems like that we've got two separate ministries. We've got our youth group ministry and we've got our church ministry. And these are opportunities for us to combine the two because it's easy for us to get complacent when we just come in and sit in the sanctuary and we don't know that those kids is, or don't pay any attention to what the kids is doing. And it's easy for them to forget about us when they're up there doing their thing. So when it's an opportunity for us to come together like we did Friday night, I think it was just a, a great time. It was a special time. It was a wonderful time. It was an anointed time. And I just thank God for everything that took place and uh, look forward to continuing to do that. And listen, church, we owe it to those kids Amen. to leave it better than we found it. Amen. I don't know if y'all noticed, I seen again this morning where another young lady that was being bullied in school committed suicide. There's demonic oppression and possession after our children. And he come from one purpose, and that's to kill, steal, and destroy. And it's up to some children of God to become everything that they can possibly be in the eyes of God so that we can gain favor. You look at what took place with, uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot. And you look, look at things that took place throughout history. Abraham, many times things took place because Abraham had favor with God and others were saved. Amen? And we need to be like Abraham and we need to have favor with God so that these children have some, uh, an opportunity and some hope. Amen? Because it's a horrific time that they live in. Something that none of us has ever uh, experienced. Amen? But thank God that he's still on the throne and he can change their direction. Amen? All right. God's good. Right. And I look forward to what he's going to do here this morning. And we're going to have a good time in the Lord today. Amen. Where'd Buddy go? Way back there. You come on and do your announcements. Just look for the shining beacon in the air. Check, didn't you? Uh, morning, everybody. I'd like to ask for all the youth and their leaders to stand up. Any other youth group over here? Even the, even if you weren't here for the Valentine's thing Friday night. Okay, tonight, after the service, Super Bowl viewing party in the Grace Building, have finger foods, 
Bring your finger foods. If you don't have if you don't have any, just bring your fingers. <laughs> we'll have plenty of food as we always do. Just another opportunity for us to fellowship with with, with one another and have a good time without all the cussing and fussing and drinking and stuff going on in the world. Because there'll be enough end up of that and we need to stay away from it. <laughs> Next Saturday, hot dog and bake sale. Benefit. Starts at 10.30 in the morning. It's for Tony and Carol. Help uh, raise money for them, uh, just general everyday expenses and mental expenses. Medical expenses, excuse me. Um, Angie told me this morning that in dire need of donations of canned drinks and chips, if you want to bring some, please have them here by next whether it's coming Wednesday night because she says she's going to Sam's Thursday morning. So uh, that'll be, if we can get some, some donations, that will uh, help offset the cost of this uh, of this thing, and, and there will give us more money that we can do for Tony and Carol. Krispy Kreme fundraiser coming up quick. Uh, February 19th which is next Sunday morning is the last day to order. They will be delivered on the 22nd. So keep that in mind. And, and all that money goes into uh, the fund to help for our, for our Christmas fund help the kids and fam families at Christmas time. Vacation Bible School in July. Be in, be in prayer for that so that we can make this thing a Rousing success. Might see some souls change, lives change, and souls saved. That's what it's all about. Any more announcements? Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Anything else? That's a, that, that's enough. That's enough. All right. Nothing else. Ushers, if you would, please.
morning. If everyone will stand. We're going to start out by singing um, page 546 in your hymnal. The words will also be on the projector. Love lifted me. Page 546 in your hymnal, and the words will be on the projector. We'll sing all three verses.
was talking to the kids this morning in Sunday school about how Jesus was coming into this town and there was people that came and brought, you know, some sick people to him and, you know, without going into depth about how he could just heal them and how he just took care of them. He didn't just make it better so that it felt all right, but he, he healed them. And that same excitement that people felt when Jesus would actually walk into their town, you can still feel that today. And when I think about it, I get so excited because I think about the people in my life, and I think about the old me, that I needed Jesus to walk into my town. If y'all had known me before, and I've said this, and that was been part of my testimony, you wouldn't like me very much because I'm the most unworthy probably in his room to stand. And I'm going to tell you, there's people in my life now that I'm still no more worthy than them, but they, they've never asked Jesus into their heart. And I know people in my life that feel like I'm too far gone. He's never going to take this addiction away. He's, how can he forgive? Man, nobody knows what I've been doing. I mean, it's, y'all, I'm going to tell you, he can fix it. And I pray for those, not just in my family, but every family, that God will just show himself and just love on them and that they'll realize that he can fix it and he can cause a miracle in their life and they can feel that. So. Standing 
Frankie's sister. Richard. Yes, sir. That's all this. Yes. I, I can't even explain it. Amen. Like it's what I said in my desk to read my Bible and think about all the miracles God has done for me. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Amen. He has for us all. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? You know, we're not going to quench spirit. Yes, sir. You know, I was sitting here, standing here listening to all the singing. All the good singing that was, that was going on in here. Can only imagine. Amen. Yeah, so imagine. Amen. 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 God is good. Before we get into the message, and I think right now is a perfect time for it, Brother Harvey, would you come down? So I believe the Spirit of God's in his house right now. Amen. And I believe he's moving. Brother Harvey has been through cancer and twice. twice, and the Lord has brought him through, and he believes in the power of prayer. And me and him was talking yesterday, and he's been struggling with his pain in his back, and he needs relief. Amen. Amen. And I believe there's a God in heaven that wants to meet him right where he's at right Amen. now, Amen. and relieve him of that pain. Amen. That's through me too, couple. Amen. Yeah, last night when I come home, my wife had to force her to shoot off my foot. Amen. Absolutely. That's true. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Good, brother. <laughs> Amen. 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 God's already there. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. God's good, brother. God is good. He has blessed you and continues to. Amen. 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 Oh, that sweet spirit here this morning. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. We have a cancer doctor appointment in the morning, so. Amen. Don't mind doing this too. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. 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 At work, they found out she had cancer on the side of her head. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? All right. I believe there's a God in heaven that wants to answer our prayers. Amen. Amen. He wants to meet us in our time of need. And church, they've never been. And you know, these situations need a miracle, as, as, as my sister just sung about. And only God can give us a miracle. Amen. Only God can move in these situations. Doctors' hands can only go so far. People can only help so much. But when all that ends, God begins. Amen. And I believe God's going to move in every one of these situations. We've just got to trust Him with everything in us. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's go to the Lord. Father, we love you and thank you for this day, Father God. We believe, God, that you are an almighty, thrice holy God. You are just God, and you believe, Father God, and uh, you tell us to believe, Lord, that if we'll come before you in our time of need, we can find mercy. And, God, we come before you right now, Lord, with these petitions, Lord. And uh, you know what? My, bro my brother has faith in you, God. You've removed cancer from him. You've done all these more wonderful works, Father God. And, Lord, we've got others in 
in this room that uh, uh, has the same testimony and got these today, my brother with his back and these with arthritis and so many other situations and circumstances. God, we need the miracle from the hand of God. We need a touch from heaven, Father God. We need you to move in each and every one of these situations, Father God. Oh, Lord, I lift my mother-in-law up to you, God. I just ask you to move mightily in her life, God. And, oh, Lord, all these others, Lord, that was lifted up here. God, I can't remember them all. The cancer uh, uh, test tomorrow, the, the different situations and circumstances, Father God. But I know, God, that you on the throne. And, Father, you said that if you'll be high and lifted up, you'll draw all men to you, God. You went to that cross. You died on Calvary's hill. And you made us a promise that by your stripes, we are healed, Father God. So st we stand before you, Father God, as a healed people, Lord, yes. knowing that you, God, you and you alone has worked miracles in these situations, Father. Lord, we love you, we trust you, and Father, we need you. Lord God, our nation needs you. Hedge us in, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Love y'all. Amen. Amen. <coughs> God is moving. God's doing a mighty work. God's revealing his self to his people. And I thank him for that. If you have your Bibles, turn to Judges. Chapter 13, verse 24. Judges 13, 24. We're going to use this one verse as a launching pad, and we're going to preach uh, 14, 15, and 16th chapter. Everybody's okay with that, ain't they? How many of you looking forward to the Super Bowl tonight? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I see all the hands. Yes, yes. Y'all know what we're preaching tonight? <laughs> Psalms chapter 119. The whole chapter. <laughs> no, we won't do you that way. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God's good. We're going, it's a very familiar story, very familiar scripture. And, uh, but I believe God's got some revelation for us. You know, when you look at the story of Samson, it's a, a perfect image of Israel. It's a, 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 a revelation of Israel and, and the path that Israel would take, the, the rebellion that Israel would do, the power that Israel had, the power that Israel lost. And, you know, I believe we can look at society today and we could ask this question, how the mighty falls? How can people that has the power and the spirit of God on them and, and have the, the ability to serve God and know that you have the anointing of God on you and yet fail God, yet fall away from the things of God. And we've seen it. I mean, we see it all the time and we've seen mighty men fall. We've all failed God, but we've seen mighty men of God that has uh, served God and made an impact and uh, made a difference only to lose their way and fall. And many times, and the Bible teaches that, you know, pride cometh before what? A great fall. So many times it's a great fall. And many times when these failures take place and when this, uh, something like this happens, it's not just the servant that's impacted, right? It's many others. So Samson is an example of Israel's failure and how that Israel's failure is still today affecting you and me because we all find ourselves from time to time in these compromisable and compromising times, right? And we make excuses for it, don't we? I mean, we always do. And as I've said many a time, I say it till the Lord pulls me out behind the pulpit and lays me in that ground. 
I believe that the greatest thing that creates sin in a man or woman's life is selfishness, right? Wouldn't you agree? I mean, that's, that's the key to it. And we don't like to think that way. We like to blame it on the devil. We like to blame it on society. We like to blame it on the church, mom and daddy, preacher, teacher. We blame it on somebody, amen? Right. Police, amen, government, amen. We, we try to blame it on everything instead of taking the and holding ourselves accountable for what God has given us because we're all blessed of God. Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at one verse. We're going to use it as a launching pad. Uh, 13, chapter 13, verse 24. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. Amen. Let me read that one more time. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed Israel. The Lord has blessed us. Amen. 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 Father, we love you and thank you for this day. Thank you for all your many blessings. Father, just uh, come and go with us for the next few minutes, Father God, and give us revelation and magnify yourself uh, through your word, Father God, and we'll be sure to give you the glory for everything that takes place. Father, bless us with your presence. Father, hedge us in, put a hedge of protection around us, and bless our nation, Father God. Uh, Lord, uh, revive our nation uh, and let it start in us, Father. We love you and need you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So here Samson was born. He, he, he's, uh, this journey has started. The next verse talks about the Spirit of the Lord being on him. Uh, then we move into chapter 14. And in 14, chap, uh, chapter 14, verse 1, uh, we start getting revelation of, of the downfall or the fall of man. And there's so much here, uh, there's no way we'll get through it all, but we're going to just move through it as best we can and, and deal with what God gives us and what stands out uh, today as we go through this scripture. In verse, uh, chapter 14, verse 1, the Bible says, And Samson went down. Well, right there is the first problem. Amen. Uh, we got to look at our nation and look at our government and look at society and look at Israel and look at Samson. Uh, first thing he started doing was getting out of the will of God. Amen. And uh, when you say, you, you look at it, he went down to um, uh, Timothy, Tim, yeah, that place, Timothy. Tim, I was saying it good earlier. Is that close enough? Yeah. I still got more than seven minutes, ain't I? Okay, all right. Yeah, he went down there. But see, the thing is, that was on his way to Gaza. And Gaza was the place that uh, was filled with Philistines. That's exactly what was taking place there. And, and, and so he went down. He went, now, he had the Nazarite uh, code. He had the Nazarite vows. That's, that's what he was reared up in. And uh, so he was, his mother and father knew the Scripture. His mother and father knew the right way. And, and, and so here he was at a place to where he was going down to an area that he shouldn't have went. And the Bible says right there that he saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters, I got it that time, of the daughters of Philistines. So here he was in Timnath. He had made it uh, and, and he had saw this daughter of a Philistine. Now, he, he being an Israelite, he being of the Israel of the sin, he couldn't uh, persuade his mother and father or shouldn't have been able to persuade his mother and father that this would be okay. Yet he saw her. And listen to verse 2. Verse 2 is the key to Samson's fall, is the key to Israel's fall, it's the key to the United States of America's fall, it's the key to mine and your fall found. Right here in verse 2. He says in verse 2, And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman. Women. I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. <clears throat> now, 
He's putting himself in the position to override what he knew was right and wrong. He was making a decision. And now he's drug his mom and his daddy into this. He's saying, listen, I want you to go get him. Now, he was a judge. He was a judge of Israel. He was a, a, a prominent man. He had position. He had power. And he told his mother and his father, and church, this is a perfect example of what's taking place in our society today. How that we are persuaded that it's okay to sin. See, his mother and father knew that it wasn't okay for him to go to Timnath. He know, they know it wasn't okay for him to make it to Gaza. They knew it wasn't okay for him to come to this uh, place of, of having this lust over this Philistine woman. <coughs> but listen to verse 3. Then the father and mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters and, uh, of thy brethren and among all my people? that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcision Philistines. So why are you doing this? You, you, there are plenty of women right here. Amen. Now what, what was taking place here is Paul teaches it as being unequally yoked. Amen. And listen, I want you young people that's not been married, that, that hadn't been married yet, or, or somebody that's looking for a, a spouse. The Bible is clear. You are not to be unequally yoked. If you don't find one that believes that Jesus Christ come, lived, and died on the cross of Calvary, you have no business being with that person. Male, female, no matter what everybody thinks, you have no business being there because it won't do a thing but wreck you, wreck your family, and wreck everybody involved. Amen? Amen. Amen. And don't think for a minute that you can change them. Oh, I'll go into this relationship because I know that after they with me a little while, they'll change. No, we'll see in a minute what takes, how the change takes place. Amen. <clears throat> and Samson said unto his father, now here it is, get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. That was what he was after. He saw what his lust, what his flesh desired. And he went after her. And he didn't care that he was breaking his Nazarite vows. He didn't care that he was going on a journey to where he was going to break his three Nazarite vows. He didn't care that he was going against his mother and father. He didn't care what was taking place. He was going to do this because it satisfied him. Our nation has, has defiled itself and became a reprobate. Why? Because it wants to satisfy those that are trying to please themselves. Right. Amen. Amen. Everybody wants to please their self. Nobody wants to please God. Amen. And that's the society that we live in today. And that's the reason that we're under the, the bondage that we're under today. That's the reason it don't look like the church has any power. That's the reason it don't look like the church can see what's going on. Listen, the true remnant can see it. The true remnant still has power. The true remnant can make a difference. But there, that proves, church, that wides the gate broads the way that leads to destruction and many will find it, but straights the way and narrows the path that leads to life everlasting and few they be that enter therein. Amen? Few. So let's move on. Let's look at verse 4. He went down. He knew he was going down. He was falling. He knew he was getting in a mess. In verse 4 he says, but his father and mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines for at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Verse 5, then went Samson down. Remember, he's morally fallen. He's morally fallen. The minute we start looking away from God, we start going down morally. And that's the, the, the fabric of our nation. The moment we took our, many, many, many years ago, the moment we took our eyes off of God as being the leader of our sovereign nation, not a president, not a king, not a priest, not a congress, but God Almighty as being the leader of our nation, we started going down. 
down, down. We started heading to an immoral place. Now, he went down, and listen to this, and his father and his mother went too. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I had prepared a message, and I was up at 4 o'clock this morning like I do every Sunday morning, or about 3.30 I started, uh, reading and studying and praying over the Scripture. And I hadn't a bit more looked at this point than a man on the moon. And I know I've read this quite a few times. Samson went down and his father and his mother to Timnath. He didn't go down alone. His mother and father went with him. Listen, church. Israel was our example. Israel went down because other leaders compromised and said it's okay and went with them. Mothers and fathers today are letting the children dictate how they're raised. And they're going down. They're going down to an immoral place. And the fathers and mothers are okay with it. And even though they may not feel that they're okay with it. They tried to persuade Samson, right? They tried to persuade him. No, why don't you go amongst your crowd? You know, stay equally yoked. You don't need to do this. But then along with him, they went. When your child comes to you and says, I'm a boy, born, of a, born a boy, and comes to you and says, but I believe I'm supposed to be a girl, and you even for an instant entertain that thought, you're going down with them. When you're to be the, the authority, when you're to be the one that says, no, listen, you are what you were born, that is the end of this. Amen? But, but our society has went down. We, we've become a society that goes along to get along. Amen? And that's why everything goes in the church today. Amen? People don't want to upset the apple cart. They're scared to make somebody mad. Well, listen, I would rather our children get mad and I would rather our children have to be drug in here by their mother and father and you are still the mother and the father. You steal the leadership of the family. And I would rather them be drug into the house of God, fighting, but hear the truth and have to understand the truth than to, for the families to say it's okay. Stay at home. Here's your litter box. We'll line up your surgery next week. Amen? Church, listen. This, I don't know why this has, has not stood out to me before now. But that's the very reason that our nation is in the trouble that it's in. Because mothers and fathers that knew better went along anyway. And if you go along, listen, if I tell my child that he should not do something and then I go along with him to do it, in his mind and in his heart, he thinks daddy's okay with it. Amen? Amen? We can't go along with it. We are supposed to be the authority. And listen, he went down to Tim that, Tim that, that place and came to the vineyard of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roar against him. All right, now let's talk about the, the, the Nazarite code. The Nazarite code was three different things. First of all, he couldn't cut his hair. Second of all, he couldn't partake of any, anything that come from the vine. So even Welt's grape juice wasn't fit for a Nazarite. They couldn't, couldn't partake of it. What in the world is he doing going into a vineyard? And they wasn't supposed to touch anything dead. And we'll get into all of those here in just a minute. Why? Because once he took that first step toward Timnath, he was turning his back on the direction that God wanted him to go. And that leads to moral decay. It don't start out. Sin does not start out. Listen, you do not commit adultery without first entertaining the lustful thoughts. Right. Amen? Amen? You do not commit a robbery without first coveting the money that you're going to make on the robbery. It all starts up here with a thought. You do not hate a brethren to murder 
without it starting as a thought. And we have to put an end to it there because if we take one step toward that thought, you better believe the devil's going to draw us right on in. And it's going to wax worse and worse, just as we see here. And so the, a young uh, lion roared. Now, you know, to me, this is a, this is a, a sign from God. <laughs> Get out of here. Roar. <laughs> Amen. But Samson run down there and grabbed him and ripped him like a, a, a kid goat. That's what he did. Now what has he done? The next thing you know, I'm not going to read all this so that we can keep going. Uh, verse 7, he said he went down and he talked with the woman and she pleased him well. He, he, he fell in love with her. He wanted to marry this woman. He had done ripped this line. Now his mother and his father is there and he goes back by the vineyard and all of a sudden he sees this honeycomb hanging from the dead corpse. Now I don't know what took place. I ain't never seen no honeycomb inside of a dead corpse. Maybe that's why the lion was roaring. I don't know. But what I do know is this rascal saw it, went, pulled the honeycomb out, and fed it to his mother and his father. That's what takes place with sin. We start feeding it to everybody else. Why was it sin? Because they didn't have the ability to touch anything that was dead. And he took this honeycomb from a dead corpse and fed it to his mother and his father. That's what took place with Israel down through the times. Wicked men and women that are not under the power of God has took that ability and fed it to this lost and dying nation and this lost and dying world and got us to partake of the sin that they in. Amen. 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 That's exactly what's taking place today. They're trying to feed us this garbage and make us like it. All right, I got to, I got to speed up. We're already 19 minutes in. So he, he goes along <coughs> and a couple different times he runs into situations like this. He's done been part of, of touching a dead body. He's fed it uh, to the family. Now he makes a riddle about it. He makes this little riddle. Let's see if we can find that. Where's the riddle at? Where's the riddle? Where's the riddle? Where's the riddle? Uh, in verse 13, yes, but I cannot declare it is. No, that's the sheets and garments. He said, put, put forth the riddle, uh, that of my heart. And he said unto them, out of the eater, speaking of the lion, came forth meat. And out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. So he gave them, they was doing it for seven days. He gave them seven days to get it. If you get it right, I'm going to give you 30 uh, uh, garments and 30 sheets. And uh, so he's made this bet with them. And he, so he's, and he went against the Nazarite vow in order to get to this place. And, and here he is uh, making this bet. And they fulfilled the riddle. How do they fulfill the, the riddle? They persuade his wife to give them the riddle because she's the only one that knows. She kept on at him. It tried him three or four different times. Finally got the riddle from him. And then she shares it with the man. The man brings it back to him on the seventh day. And what takes place? What takes place? Here he is knowing that my wife, that I longed for, that pleased me well, the lust that I was after has now set me up. And listen to how he talks about her. What was it at? Well, I done got off my page. Verse 18. He says, if you had not plowed with my heifer, <laughs> young people don't start off your marriage by calling your wife's heifer. <laughs> now, if you had not plowed with my heifer, Ye had not known the riddle. He said you wouldn't have known it as she hadn't have fed it to you. She'd give it to you. Church, there is so much to learn here. When you and me make a vow and a covenant with God, and that vow and covenant starts falling apart, the world's going to know it. And great's going to be the fall. Amen? Because our covenant is with a thrice holy God, a just God. That's going to stand his ground. Man, I got to hurry up. We got, I got four points over here that I got to get to once I get through with all this scripture. And listen to this. I want, you to, I want you to hear this. In verse 19, he says, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Now, he's done failed. He's done failed in everything except for having his hair cut. He had done failed in two of the, the Nazarite vows. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. 
I want you to know something. Just because God's blessing you and just because God might be blessing your ministry and just because God's blessing your family might not mean that you're right in the eyes of God. Samson was getting blessed. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. And he went and slew these men. And then later he takes the jaw of an ass and uh, slews thousands. He has the power of God upon him even though he was failing God. Don't tell me that God won't bless somebody that's out of the will of God. Why would God do that? Because God made the statement in Proverbs that great would be the fall. God already knows when we're going to fail him. And God wants that failure to be grand and great. And it was in Samson's eyes. These people were seeing this mighty, powerful man. We've seen a mighty and a powerful uh, nation called Israel. We've seen a mighty, powerful nation called the United States of America. But when we crumble whether it's individually or corporately, when we crumble, God uses the impact. Amen? Amen. God uses it. So, all right, I, I sped up a little bit and got through some stuff there. Um, let's move on to uh, chapter 16. Chapter 16, now all this has took place now. I, then in, the, in the meantime, uh, his wife that, that he was so after, you know, that hot chick that he was after from the very beginning, I mean, she evidently was smoking hot for him to leave his Nazarite vow and for all this to take place. She was hot, but she wasn't near as hot as she ended up getting. <laughs> Amen? Because what took place when she failed him, her father, not his father, her father, her own father took her and gave her to his companions, the one that he had lost a bet to. And what did they do? They burnt her and him, her father. They burnt them both. So, yeah, she might have started out hot. She ended up smoking hot. Amen? <laughs> now, that wasn't the end of it. See, it got worse. Not only did he go at her a Nazarite, I mean, after a Philistine and break his Nazarite vow, but now he goes into a Nazarite prostitute. I mean, a Philistine prostitute. Now he goes into a Philistine prostitute. He's spurling out of control. And things just keep getting worse and worse. Church, how many of you know that sin don't stay the same? Amen. You know, what satisfies you in sin today is not going to satisfy you in the same sin tomorrow. Amen. That's why I say they should never allow legalized marijuana because it's nothing more than a gateway drug. That's all it is because at one point or another, marijuana is not going to be enough. And kids, I want y'all to know, when you start down this path, your friends might in, try to invite you in to taking one pill or smoking one joint. Now, that could be the death of you because of fentanyl. Just one. Just one could end your life. But not only that, if you go with that and it don't kill you the first time, you're going to start having a desire for it again. And that desire is going to keep waxing worse and worse. That's how we see our nation in the condition it's in. That's how Israel continued to deteriorate. That's how Samson deteriorated. That's how you and me individually deteriorate. Amen. So we've got to put up safeguards. We've got to block ourselves so that we don't fall. We've got to block ourselves so that we don't fall. In verse six, uh, chapter 16, we're going to pick up in verse 20. <clears throat> and she said, the Philistines are upon you. Now, she's done set him up a couple times. He's done broke some strings. He's done broke some ropes. And uh, she keeps tying him and trying to find out Delilah now. He's done run into Delilah. He's done left the prostitute. He's done run into Delilah. And he, uh, so she's trying to entice him just like the first wife did, trying to get the information from him so she can share it. And here she is uh, dealing with him again. And she's trying to get it out of him. And in verse 20, he says... And she said, the Philistines are upon you, upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out. Now, she's done shaved his head, got him to shave his head now. 
She, she's done, took his power. But do you realize that the power wasn't in the shaved head? <coughs> the power wasn't in the hair. The power was in the obedience. Amen. That's right. He lost his hair because he became disobedient. He lost his power because he was disobedient. Right. Amen. He says, uh, uh, she says that, uh, I woke out of a sleep and said, I will go out as at other times. He said, I'm going to do just like I did before. I'm going to shake myself. I'm going to get up. But then he said, well, it's not that the Lord was departed from him. Now he realizes, I don't have the mighty power that I had. And he said, boy, I wish I still had the power that I had. I can only hear Israel shouting that. After failure, after failure, after failure, oh, I wish I had the presence of the Lord and the power of God on my life. I think we could back up and, and think about Noah and the ark. And I bet those folks, when the door was sealed, when God sealed the door shut, was thinking, boy, I wish I had the presence of God and the protection and the power of God on my life right now. Amen. That's right. I can think of some of us, and I've been there, where I failed God and I knew that I hadn't repented and God separated Himself from me and I said, oh, I wish that I had the power of God on me. Amen. Church, if this nation stands very much longer, there's going to be a time that our nation is going to be crying out, oh, I wish we had the presence of God and the power of God on us. Amen. Right. Samson understood what was fixing to take place. He knew that because of his failure, because of his uh, rebellion against God, that he was going to answer for it. Church, there's something that you can be assured of today. This word is true. Every jot and every tittle is true. And it says that we will answer for the sin that's in our life. We're going to give an account for it. And God will forgive us. But it takes a contrite and a, a, a confound heart to surrender to God truthfully with godly sorrow and turn back to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he then will forgive us. But Samson knew that he was too far past that and he wasn't going to be able to get back where he needed to get. Church, there's a time that God will turn us as a nation over to a reprobate mind. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and as individuals. So let's look at, now we can get to the introduction, now we can get to the message. The message, we're going to look at some things that he lost, some things that uh, Reno, when you said the six-hour message this morning, I thought about this. I said, oh, yeah, we're going to be at least three hours anyhow. <laughs> Amen. Verse 21, and we're going to find these four points in verse 21, uh, 17 and 21. So let's start with 17. Let's back up to verse 17. Um, that he told her all his heart. See, he, he finally opened up to her and said unto her, there hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite. See this? Unto God from my mother's womb. And if I be shaved, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak. You see this? When he fails God, he's going to become weak. And then he's going to be like any other Man, do you realize when we accept Jesus Christ, we're no longer like any other man or any other woman? When the power of God is on us, God created us individually. Each one of us have a different DNA. Each one of us are totally different of the other person. But with the power of God on our life, then we become a Samson. We become someone with superhuman strength. You know, we see in these pictures, all the, the pictures of Samson as he's being big and mighty. But 
she was having to ask him where did his strength come from. So evidently he wasn't big. He wasn't real muscular or she would have alluded it to that. It's not what you and me can do. It's what Christ can do through us. Amen. That's what makes the difference. And God has chose us to have strength over weakness. We have the power of God on our life. He said here that he would become weak. Why? Because he would become like he was before Jesus Christ. Before God put the power in him. He would become like any other man. I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to go back to being just like I was before. I want to have the power of God on my life in every aspect of life. Amen. So we got to watch for the pitfalls. He lost that strength. He lost that strength. He became weak. He became like any other man. Next, he lost his sight. Look at verse 21. But the Philistines took him and put his eyes out. Now, that, you, you read that fast, don't sound that bad, does it? But do you realize what, they, what I've understood, what I've read? That they took a hot poking iron and shoved it into his eyes until it burned his eyeballs just about completely out and then they took a spoon and dug the rest out. Listen church, sin hurts. Sin hurts. The impact's the same church. The impact is the same. He lost his sight. The Philistines put his eyes out. He lost his sight. But greater than that, he went through the pain and the suffering and the anguish of facing his sins. Church, sin hurts. It leaves a, de a devastation on our lives. It removes our sight to be able to see the glory of the Lord. That's where the pain comes from. Not the hot iron, but being separated from the view of, of, of God. Amen. Amen. So he lost his sight. And then he lost his liberty. Look at the rest of verse, or some more of verse 21. And brought him down to Gaza. Now that's where the Philistines was. That was the capital of, of Philistine. And, and, and he, they brought him down to Gaza. And what did they do? They bound him with feather, fitters and fletters and brass. They bounded. They tied him up. He was yoked. He was no longer free. He was in a house of prison. Do you realize that sin imprisons us? Amen. You say, well, my sin is not that bad, and it's just me, and it's just my sin, and it's not affecting anybody else. Remember, the day will come that it'll affect everybody around you, and then some. Well, there'll be people reading about it years down the road. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're in leadership in the church, the devil has put a this big. He wants to get you out of the way. He wants to imprison you. You know what sin does? It takes away the liberty of Jesus Christ to work in your life. And when you don't have the anointing and the power of God to work in your life, you can't overcome these battles. You can't rip a line in half. You can't do these mighty things. You can't take the jawbone of an ass and kill thousands of people. You can't do that without the power of God on your life. We can't take the wiles of the devil and defeat it without the power of Jesus Christ. We can't beat this. We'll be in a house of bondage. We'll be in a prison. And church, I don't know about you, but I know my son in that prison down there in the, in the state prison is in an awful place and he's locked in and I hear the anguish and the pain in his voice every day. And church, I want you to know that sin has consequences and those consequences sometimes can be greater than we ever want to bear. Amen. But thank God there's one that can forgive and take us out of that, bring us out of that house of prison. So he lost his... He lost his strength, he lost his sight, he lost his liberty, and greater than all, he lost his dignity. Now, Samson was a mighty man. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew he had great strength. Everybody knew he could kill thousands with a jawbone. Everybody knew that he was a, a man. Everybody knew that he could do what he wanted to do and get what he wanted to get. Everybody knew that he was a man. And then all of a sudden, his strength is gone, his sight's gone, his, 
Everything has left him. His liberty is gone. The power of God's gone. And here he stands before people as a normal man. And but greater than any of the physical pain that was on him was the shame of him breaking his Nazarite vows. That's the greatest problem. That's where our issue comes in at. Look at the rest of verse 21. Uh, 21. And he did grind in the prison house. So he was grinding. He, he became a slave. He became a slave that was a servant that was humiliated. Church, do you realize when we stand up and we make a profession, Jesus Christ has saved me? Do you realize what that does to the economy of God? The Bible says that the angels in heaven are celebrating. Yeah. Amen. But do you know what takes place when that same one fails God? A shame comes upon the church, upon the whole church. Not just upon Samson, but upon the whole church. A shame comes upon those that are failing God because they have broken their vow with God. When you, come, when you become a child of God, you're saying, God, I am a new creation. God, I am crucified with you. Nevertheless, I live. Yet the life that I now live, I don't live in the flesh. I live by the power of the one that died and gave himself for me. And then for us to surrender that for the filth and the garbage of this world. And then we wonder why God backs up, removes his hedge of protection. See, our nation was built on Jesus Christ and the cross. You, you, can, you can shape it any way you want to, but you go back and study through history and you'll know this nation was created for that purpose that we could bring glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. But our nation has failed God and now is standing in reprobate, in shame, in guilt. And church, it's our fault. Because somewhere down through history, a child said, I don't think that's right. And a mother and father said, well, we'll go along with you. Amen. Amen? Or you could put it this way. A leader in a church said, I know what the Bible says, but... And then a group of people went along with him. Amen? Amen. Just like the mother and father went down with Samson. And that's exactly what has happened. We can't blame the moral decay of the United States of America on the White House. It came from the church house. Amen. And that means it come from mine and your house. Amen. Because, see, we're not just a church when we're gathered in here. We're the church when we're at home. And that's why we've got people that say they're born again, that stands for abortion, that stands for all this craziness that's going on today. That's why we got leaders in Congress that makes up all these crazy rules. And still, if you ask them, they'll tell you right quick, they're going to heaven when they die. And the devil is alive. They're going to bust hell wide open. And there's people in the church today that is rejecting the power of God that is going to bust hell wide open and is still compromising the word of God when God has made it clear Israel will fall. You and me will fall. Mighty men and women of God before us has fallen. And the only safeguard that we can put in place is the Holy Ghost of God and His precious Word. Amen. Amen. Amen? But let me tell you something. It's enough. Amen. It's enough. No, they done shot down two more of them little floating things. People starting to look up. 
And guess what? They're getting smaller. So they're going to be harder to see. So y'all need to look up more often. Amen? Let's start looking up. Let's start looking. He says that if we're born again, we should look up because what? Our redemption draweth nigh. Amen? Hey, it's just a matter of time till all this is going to be over. Samson's eyes is going to get plucked out. All these things is going to happen. The nation's going to fall. But glory to God, the remnant's going to hear the trump of God and you and me are going to leave this place because of a remnant that trusts is in the power of God and believes that we can repent and turn back to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? If the Lord's dealt with you, you come. I don't want to hear anymore, teach me to listen. I don't want to see anymore, give me a vision that you could move this heart to be set apart. I don't need to recognize the man in the mirror. And I don't want to trade your plan for something familiar. I can't waste a day, I can't stay the same I wanna be different, I wanna be changed Till all of me is gone, and all that remains Is a fire so bright, the whole world can see That there's something different so come and be different in me. And I don't want to spend my life stuck in a pattern. And I don't want to gain this world but lose what matters. And so I'm giving up everything because I want to be You know, throughout history, the old statement's so true, the squeaky wheel gets to grease. That's church, that's history compromising, that's life compromising. And the one that does the most complaining usually gets the satisfactory answer, amen? And that's what we see in our nation today. And unfortunately, that's what's went on in our church throughout time is you get people that gets a burner saddle and and I've done it. I've made the wrong decision before because of people moaning and crying and being young in the Lord and and thank God that he grows us and I still may make some mistakes like that. I can tell you right now it's a lot harder to get me there today Amen. than it was before and hopefully that increase ever to every day because it's not about satisfying man. Amen. 
It's about satisfying God. And if we, if we as a nation or we as a church as a whole would turn back to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and say, God, I am going to do everything I can to satisfy you. Not myself, not my family, not the ones just whining and moaning and crying, but the, I am wanting to satisfy you, God. Church, I'm telling you, this thing will turn around, our homes will turn around, our children will, will turn around, and our nation will turn around. Amen. 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 Now, do we know when this thing's going to wrap up? None of us do. But if I look through history and look at what the Word of God says, I'd have to say that we're extremely close right Amen. now. Amen. That's right. So how much difference we can make, I don't know. But here's what I do know. If we don't do anything, we're going to get the same results. Right. Amen. Amen. So if we start making a change in us, in each one of us individually, and say, you know what, I'm going to get closer to God. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to worship God. That baby worshiped this morning. He loved that song when the choir was singing. Oh, my goodness. He had me. I, I was just... And that was pure. See, he was, he was enthused by what was taking place. Hey, man, I, I'm enjoying that. You could see it on his face. And I was enjoying seeing him enjoy it. So imagine what God was feeling. So if you and me are just surrender our life and come as a babe, come as a child, and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords and say, God, I know I might look foolish to the people. I might look foolish to the world, but God, you called me to be peculiar. And I'm going to be peculiar. I'm going to be zealous for you. And I'm going to serve you with everything in me. And I'm going to worship you with everything in me. And everything, everything else, everything else has to take second place. Amen. Amen. And I'm, I promise you, church, it, it may not turn this whole nation around. I don't know. But it could make a difference in mine and your environment. Right. Amen. Amen. And it could help somebody else. If Samson would have turned his life around, it could have helped others. If his mama and daddy would have took a stand, it could have helped others. Amen. We can't go alone to get along and expect to help others. Right. Amen. God's good. Right. Let's pray for our nation. Let's keep praying for our nation. Well, preacher, you said last week that it was a reprobate. And it, was, it is. It is. But they're still a remnant. Let's pray for our nation. We talked about that this morning. Many times we just give up and quit praying about stuff because we think it's too far gone. God said for us to bring the desires of our hearts to him. And if it lines up with his will, he's going to be in the midst of it. Amen. Amen. And I believe God's going to put a hedge of protection around us. At the very least, he's going to protect these babies because we're begging him to. Amen? Amen? And that's what we should do. Amen? God's good. Amen. All right. Brother Darrell, would you close? Yes, sir. We've got a preacher that stands up here, preaches the word. He don't stutter. He don't back off. He's a man of God that we need to appreciate and we need to get around him. Everything is said for him and his wife. Amen. Amen. We need you. Amen. The devil is looking for churches like this to turn us. Oh, yeah. And that's what they're looking for. There's people like us that uh, stand up for the word and won't back down. Amen. I've got a man behind the pulpit that does not back out. I'll never turn down prayer. <laughs> Absolutely. We, uh, we need to get around that same prayer. Amen. Y'all come on. We need it. <laughs>